welcome to the Chick-fil-A Classic. I am Sylvester Williams, and we're getting ready for some more exciting basketball action. Here in the third place game, we're going to watch Laura Richland High School take on Spring Valley High School. The Diamond Hornets will be taking on the Vikings. I'm Sylvester, and I'm here with Mr. Jonathan Hemingway from CoachHemi.com. How you doing, Jonathan? I'm well. I'm in the gymnasium, getting ready to watch some great basketball, Sylvester. Very excited to be here at the Chick-fil-A Classic. Must be a big game if Coach Hemi's here. here hey, we go. That, hey, that's what we do. We, we find the best players in the country, and we follow them around. It's a real easy job. There you go. Only on the basketball court because you get away with saying, I like to follow around teenage boys. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the follow no good. <laughs> They're running 2 on one fast break. Throws it up. Way to break it up. Bruner will lay it up, and Bruner will have two. Faster by Jordan Reed. No good, long. Jordan Bruner, the Yale commit. Laura Richland in the open court. Jacor Nelson throws it down. Well, Sylvester, you were telling me that they had some high flyers coming into this game, and Proven to be true, or at least here early on. The Lower Richland Diamond Hornets, they aren't afraid to go above the rim. Now, Jonathan, I'm going to give you a bit of history on Columbia area basketball. Lower Richland School from Richland School District 1, perennial powerhouse. Three ball, Noah Harper. I don't know if the name sounds familiar, but former LSU great Stanley Roberts. Hey, hey, I know that name. There you go. He, my mother's from Baton Rouge, so I've followed uh, LSU athletics pretty closely over the years. Okay. The only man known to dominate Shaquille O'Neal, Stanley Roberts. He's a Lord Richland guy. He was the uh, first consensus number one nationwide player out of South Carolina. He's from Lord Richland. Now, during this game, oh, turnover. During this game, the Lower Richland fast break layup. Great teamwork by Lower Richland. The Lower Richland, their mascot is the Diamond Hornets. But throughout my childhood, their mascot were the Diamonds. So I'm going to call them the Diamonds a few times. They adapted the name Hornets because early on in the school's career, they were the Hornets. So they decided to put both of them together a few years back. So I'm going to call them the Diamonds plenty of times before it's over. Jordan Bruner. Bruner with the nice turnaround. Kelvin Washington. Jacor Nelson. Nelson on the lay-in. Bruner handling the open court. Didn't need to take that dribble, got blocked from behind. Basket by Kendall Wall. Kendall Wall. Now we're going to say that name, Kendall Wall, a lot. Kendall Wall, Kendall Wall is a guy who just is there. I don't know where there is, but wherever there needs to be, Kendall Wall is there. In the open court. They're going to have a travel on that play. Kendall Wall, Jonathan, he's number 22 for uh, Spring Valley. He's a guy, I don't know how to describe his game. I don't know how to say what his game is like, what his game is like. He's just a guy who <laughs> you look up at the end of the night, he has about 12 or 14. He'll have about eight rebounds. He'll probably have two or three steals and a bunch of hustle plays That's not that doesn't go in the book. Three ball, D'Angelo Ward. That's what we call stat stuffers, and uh, you need some of those glue kids on your team if you're going to be successful. Yeah. 
Nice spin move to the basket and a lay-in. Robert Gant. Nice form and he knocks it down. Clyde Trap. Both, both teams really wanting to get out in transition and nice. not, not afraid to give up some open looks in transition with this full court pressing defense. It's pretty apparent both teams want to get open, up and down and play this free flowing style. And he's got a lot of points here early. Nutry. Seeing if he can finish out that. Basket good by Nutri. Tommy Bruner in the game, younger bro brother Jordan Bruner. That won't be any good. That'll roll around and not fall. That'll be a travel. Tommy Bruner, freshman for the Spring Valley Vikings. He'll give it off to Noah Harper. They'll move it back around. Javondi Myers over to Harper. Harper, no good. Rebound. Brought in there, 32. Javondi Myers. Javondi will go to the line and he'll shoot two. Bruner just gets a quick rest. Spring Valley High School, coached by former USC great Perry Dozier, Baltimore native. He's the head coach of Spring Valley and a former USC great, but now he's just known as PJ Dozier's dad. <laughs> No longer the basketball star in the house. He has another daughter. Starter for the oh, University of South Carolina basketball, women's right. basketball team. That house bleeds garnet and black. Step back jumper. No good. Dozier, I'm sorry, Bruner gets the rebound. They'll get it back out to Bruner. Bruner a travel, took that false step with it. <laughs> Little brother looks at big brother and says, hey, I handled the ball on the outside, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Bruner's a talented kid. Had a chance to watch him a couple times with the Upward Stars on the travel circuit during the spring and the summer. Real versatile. You see his length, ability to rebound. And he can play facing up a little bit too, but clearly his ability to affect shots and rebound on the interior are going to be his calling card at the next level. Bruder, not only is he a star on the basketball court, he's also a star in the classroom. Young man accepted a scholarship to Yale University. you got to love that. You've got to love to see kids that are thinking about their education, you know, life beyond basketball. Certainly you want to get it done on the court, you know, maximize your talent to the, to the fullest, you know, even if that means going on and playing professionally, whether it be here in the States or overseas. 
but the ball always stops bouncing for everybody. Mm -hmm. And having that quality education like at Yale or you know some Ivy League school is certainly going to help him long beyond his playing days. Yes, sir. You know, it's amazing, and, and, and the young man definitely has an eye toward the future because he was offered, you know, scholarships from your traditional basketball schools. But like you said, that ball will stop bouncing one day. You know, I look at a kid from uh, the Atlanta area that I've watched uh, quite a bit over the years, Chris Lewis. Yes. Uh, he's emerged as an elite 100 caliber, you know, type power forward prospect. And power conferences from, or power conference schools, I should say, all over the country came calling. But he said, no, I want to go to Harvard. And, you know, and that's because I want to get into this, you know, specific business field, you know, et cetera. And, and that was it. And he shut down his recruitment. So really admire these young men that uh, have the vision, you know, the long-term vision, use basketball as a vehicle to help them get to where they want to go in life. I admire, you know, and, and that shows that some of these young kids have a lot more sense <laughs> than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> than the adults, you know, sometimes. I probably didn't get in yell because at that time I may have had problems spelling yell. <laughs> I think they lost my application in the mail. That's That's what happened. Three ball from the corner, no oh, good. Noah Harper over to Bruner. Kendall Wall, Sanders, Ward, Bruner. Back to Harper. Get it out to Sanders. Sanders picks up his dribble. Coach Dozier doesn't like what he sees, so he's going to call timeout. Got a timeout on the floor here at the Chick-fil-A Classic. All right, we're back here live at the Chick-fil-A Classic. Close game. 16-14, Spring Valley on top. Vikings on top of the Diamond Hornets. Harper thought about it. They'll move it around. Ward doesn't think about it. He puts it up. Tip, no good. Brought down by the Hornets. And they're off and running. Lay up, no good. But he'll go to the line, and he will shoot, too. Savon Townshed. Townsend with a nice little burst going to his left hand, elevates. Going to draw the foul and chance to tie the game here up at the free throw line. One more shot for Savion Townsend. Again, it's the transition game by both teams. Up tempo attack. Seeing lots of points being put up on, on the board here early on. Now it knocks down the second one. Now we got a tie ball game. Bruner, oh. Waited too long to throw it up, but Jacor Nelson is there. They get the put back basket. Nelson with the basket. Hey, 
Off of them, move it around. Wall gets it down to Bruner. Give and go. Wall. A little bit of miscommunication over there on the Spring Valley sideline. Well, it was a good, good cut and a good pass there by Bruner. I thought uh, Laura Richland had defended it pretty well. Some backside help, but fortunately for Wall, he draws a foul. One of those nice bailouts. Got to hit the free throws. Been a sloppy game from the line. And Nelson will bring it in. Bruner steps into the passing lane. Nice lay in. Kelvin Washington for two. Basketball Washington. You know, a talented player as Jordan Bruner is, you definitely don't want him to have the ball in the open court. C.J. Nutry. And this man-to-man -man pressure defense is causing problems for Spring Valley. Little two-man game, big brother, little brother. They're going to call Jacob Nelson with the hook. Bruner down there on the low block. Really demanding the basketball. That's what you like to see out of your, your big man. But what he doesn't see from the backside was the help. You know, the help kept getting two feet on the ball side, preventing that post entry. And one thing you kind of wonder, one thing coming into this season, people kind of wondered how would Bruno respond to being the man. You know, he played with P.J. Dozier for the past two seasons. Little Bruner from the outside. Kelvin Washington underneath. No good, but he'll go to the line. Yeah, he played with P.J. with P.J. Dozier for the past two seasons. And P.J. Dozier, the, all of the McDonald's All-American, he's the one who got all of the hype and all of the attention. You know, now it's your senior year. You wonder how would he respond to being the man? No good. You know, you know, Jonathan, uh, Bruner did one of the things that I, on that play that I like that great big men do. He didn't block the shot. He just altered the shot. Change or alter. Sometimes that's just as good as a block shot. Nice crossover move and lay in. Jacor Nelson staying on the books. 30 second timeout for Laura Richmond. But yeah, you know, you got you got a big man who don't block shots, but just alter shots. And that's just something I like. I like to see that. No question. I, I remember hearing this quote or maybe reading something one time about Bill Russell. You know, one, perhaps one of the greatest shot blockers of all time in the game of basketball. And he would say that when, when blocking shots, he wouldn't want to block the shot out of bounds. You know, because you give your opponent a chance to run a baseline out of bounds. He, you, know, you just want to kind of tip it up in the air for himself. And same, same principle with just changing or altering a shot. You can get them to miss, get it up on the rim, get a rebound. You know, that serves the same purpose, you know, change change ends of the floor, go from defense to offense. It may not be the, the big Ooh. woo or wow, you know, for the crowd, but it serves the same purpose. Jacob Nelson with the rip. Oh, I'm sorry, C.J. Nutcher. They look the same. <laughs> nice follow by Jordan Bruner. Quick foul. The foul is on Spring Valley's number five, Saquon Grant. His first. Valley's Tommy Brunner, that is his 
second. Team seven, one and one. For Jacord Nelson. Jacord Nelson. Good looking junior. No, guys in Out of Lower Richland. One more shot for Nelson. Jacord's listed at 6'3. I'm not quite sure the looks he's getting on the next level. But he'll definitely make a quality guard for somebody somewhere. Oof. As soon as I said something, he shot an air ball. <laughs> the announcer's jinx right there. But, but you're right. He's, he's had a productive first half. Scored plenty of points. Spring Valley Valley. Second, team save. Clyde Trap, we'll shoot a one and one. Clyde Trap, another one of those long guys from Lower Richland. Nice touch. Nice touch by Jordan Bruner to catch that one and just drop it off on the pass. It was. See the versatility there, Bruner. Not just a low block guy, but he can play in the high post, pass out of it. And a very good cut and almost a good finish along the baseline there by Harper. But again, we're starting to see a theme here, a lot of missed free throws, especially by Spring Valley. And Got to believe seven point de uh, deficit. They need every one of these. Spring Valley is leaving a lot of points on the line. Nice hands by Kendall Wall. Kendall Wall with the steal there. I told you, he's that guy. He's just there. Kendall Wall is always there. Nice layup by Harper. Good finish there by Harper. You always like your guards to be able to finish in transition, especially through contact, and that's what Harper Oh, get that there. out of here, Kendall Wall. He's there once again. <laughs> You know, it's, it's hard to describe his game. I can't really describe his game. I just. Nice play in transition. Jacord Nelson, assisted by Kevin Washington. Clyde Trapp will get the rebound. And Laura Richland is off and running. Nutchery. Oh, in and out. Hopper stops and pops. Ooh, my goodness. Got a roll out of bounds on Ta Townsend, and we'll go the other way. Got to love the tempo here. Both teams pressing the issue back and forth. But it's all about opportunities, and more importantly, it's about taking advantage of those opportunities. And we've seen some missed layups, some turnovers, missed free throws. And I think that's why you see the score the way it is right now. Hard layup right there. Javon D. Myers pounds the backboard. Ooh, barely got that one away. C.J. Nutry, he'll be bumped. Nutry knocks down the first one. Nutry and Jacor Nelson, they're the two horses 
on this lower Richland team. The two guards, two great guards, both of them are juniors. They just make things happen. Coach Dozier just leaned back in the seat and like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, those are the type of turnovers that will give you gray hair. Nice layup by Clyde Trout. <laughs> Cause it to go prematurely gray. <laughs> Good assist there by Washington on the drive and the wraparound pass. Definitely got to mention that. And the lay in good by Javondi Myers. And again, another nice assist there by Wall. I tell you, Wall is just that guy. He is. See what you're saying now. Look, look, he's playing the the middle position on a two-three zone. He's guarding point guards. He just he's kind of everywhere, isn't he? In the open court, Guyton, Guyton out of control. Richland deciding to play for one shot here. We're under one minute in this first half. Sometimes I like this. Sometimes I think it kind of backfires on you. Mm-hmm. I think you should always stick to your offense and do what you do best. In the open court, Tommy Bruner. Tommy Bruner gets ripped. Nutry and Nutry will lay it in. But an easy two. Coach Burnett's calling uh, calling a play here with under five seconds now. Trap from long range. No good. Well, here we are at the half. The score, 35-27. Laura Richland on top of Spring Valley here at the half at the Chick-fil-A Classic.
Alright, welcome back to the Chick-fil-A Classic. I'm Sylvester Williams, live. Here I got Clyde Trapp in front of me. Clyde Trapp, Noah Harper, they're in front of me. They want some of my greatness to rub off on them. Alright, here we go. They'll move it around, Harper will have the ball. Trying to feed it inside to Javondi Myers. Javondi's blocked from the backside, but they'll call a foul on the body up close. Looking at the stat sheet from the first half, pretty similar stats, 45% from the field for Lower Richmond, 44% from the field for Spring Valley. One of seven from three-point range, Lower Richland, uh, two of six, Spring Valley. Free throws, six of eight for Lower Richland and three of seven for Spring Valley. It seems like they miss more free throws than that. Yeah, you know, the misses uh, stick out sometimes mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, another another miss one. Right, right there. Pretty even on the board, 17 to 16. But I think the main difference that you'll see here, Spring Valley turned it over 16 times. Yes. In the first half to Lower Richland's nine, and I think that's where you're going to see the reason why they're down eight or I should say seven points. Well, no, eight points at the, at the half. Sloppy basketball. Nutchery from the outside. They'll battle strong, get the rebound. Laura Richland does. They'll get it out. Nice lay in by Washington. Washington's got a knack for that. Slash and sliver it to the lane and right back the other direction. Speaking of slashing and scoring is Bruner. Bruner puts it down. You know, one way to look at the turnover situation would be maybe a little bit of sloppiness. The other, the other side of it, Lower Richland's guards, you mentioned Nelson and Nutry, both doing a great job of pressuring the basketball, forcing those turnovers. So tip your cap to Lower Richland. Spring Valley now has got to respond. They've got to figure out a way to handle this pressure and be able to take advantage of it, score some points themselves. Washington will move it over to Jacor Nelson. Jacor Nelson going to the hole. He'll pick up the foul. You know, that's, that's my type of game right there. That's my type of game right there. What, I, I applaud the guys who like to get the ball to the hole, either getting some harm or getting a layup, you know. Because mm -hmm. the way I figure, I can hit free throw. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, well, Jacor. <laughs> Jacor might have had a problem on that free throw, but but that's, that's the type of game that I like. I like a guy who can go to the basket. True, true that three-point shot is pretty. Yeah. And we've seen it in, in earlier games mm -hmm. today now, Sylvester. The teams that shoot the three ball the best are the are the ones that have the inside game, whether yes. it be a, a post presence or a guy that can slash in and draw the double team and kick out. And so I agree 100% with you. The inbound alley, no good. Kendall Wall, he'll get it. Noah Harper. Cross court pass, dangerous pass to D'Angelo Ward. Bruner will catch it. Bruner. Count it. Jordan Bruner has 10 on the night. Coach Bruins bringing in a wholesale sub. He's taking everybody out the game. He said, I've seen enough of this lineup. Coach, I hadn't played yet. You want to get me in too? Ernest Thompson, Sidney Jackson, Daniel Tisdale. Now Bruner coming out, exerting himself a little bit more here in these these opening minutes, and Brian Jones, five early points, and you've got to like that if you're Coach Dozier in Spring Valley. Little 1-3-1 one, one, half-court trap. 
by Spring Valley. Let's see what they do with it. Nice lay in. Just great execution there by Laura Richland. Got the ball to one corner to the other, got it to the high post, and then the lay in. Javon D. Myers will get credit for the tip. Kickball, souvenirs for the crowd. All on the ground, going back the other way. Angelo Ward floats it in there. Nice little floater there by Ward. Spark off the bench for Spring Valley. Nice follow. Tavon Higgins for two. Laura Richland, just a real active team with some active leapers. <laughs> Bruno will turn it over, and Laura Richland's out pushing it. Give it up, no good. Underneath, no good. Follow, foul. We'll go to the line and shoot two. I think Bruner may have got straight, scraped over the eyes. Yeah. I was wondering why he wasn't underneath the bucket. They need him underneath the rim, especially in those, those situations. He's got to be a little bit more active, but I think you're right. He's kind of shaken up by something there where he forced the turnover. Bruner got that old WWF move across the eyes. Daniel Teelsdale knocks down the free throw. I think they waved it off before oh. he shot it. Yeah, still shooting two here. Something with the... Uh, Doesn't matter to Tillsdale, he's a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> so I can make one, I can make two. Let's see if he can make three in a row. You know, it's funny how that shot, the free throw, hardest shot in America, and the easiest shot in America. <laughs> Nobody's guarding you. You're up there by yourself. Nobody can hit it. Tisdale will dribble it on the line, and it'll be spring valley ball. Tip it out, D'Angelo Ward. Oh, good defense. No, they call foul. Call foul on Brian Jones. Spring Valley here down eight. They cut this lead to six just a moment ago. They're yeah. going to want to get back in this game. They're going to have to have more second chance opportunities like you see right there. And they're going to have to limit the second chance opportunities for Lower Richland on the other end. And that's one of the reasons why we see Lower Richland getting to the free throw line is those, those offensive rebounds, the second and the third chance opportunities. You can't let them get those, those easy, easy chances. Lane violation. Lane violation. Be Lower Richland ball. And two more missed free throws here by Spring Valley. Oh, Noah Harper in the passing lane, and Kendall Wall gets the steal. We're going to stay down this way. the bank board. Yeah, a little sloppy right here, trying to find the rhythm. 
Both teams trying to settle in to this second half. No Richland in a in a matchup zone here. Three ball, Ward. Three pointer by Daniel Ward. Nice catch and shoot. Clyde Trap plays with it. Trap working down where he belongs down there. Jumper from the outside, Brian Jones. Basketball. Brian Jones, one of the few seniors on this team. Harper over to D'Angelo Ward. Ward! Three pointer by D'Angelo Ward. Ward's heating up. And now we found our rhythm a little bit here. Ward with back to back the jumpers. Jumper the previous possession here by Lower Richland, and now an opportunity to get to the free throw line. Although that was a nice jumper by, by Ward, I was really impressed with the assist there by Harper. Used the ball screen, going to his left hand, got up in the air and found the open shooter. And Trapp is able to make both free throws there to stretch it back out to five points. Five point lead for Lower Richland. Air ball comes up with nothing. Stop and shoot the jumper, no good. Follows his own shot, shovel pass. Kicks it back out. Brian, Brian Jones, Jones, once again. Brian Jones has six points in the second half. That was a good mid-range jumper Jordan there by Jones. The Actually, two mid-range jumpers there by Jones. You know, this is one of those things. Uh, Coach Burnett's took out his uh, took out his studs. Yeah. And his subs have managed to keep the same pace. Foul on the three-point shooter. Well, that delivers quite a message to your team. You know, when your starters don't go out. And, have the intensity or don't execute the way that, that you want to show the confidence in the, the reserves. You know, that tells everybody, hey, look, you know, everybody's got to be on top of their game. It also speaks to the depth, you know, of, uh, of the talent that Lower Richmond has. The you know, that you can have that, that confidence. Mm -hmm. Number two, Jacoby Nelson, number three, CJ Nutri, number 10, Savion Townsend, number 22, Calvin Washington. It'll roll around and fall in. One shot. A free throw line has not been kind to Spring Valley. The ball only gets one of three of those free throws to go. That's funny. I thought they were supposed to be free. Hey, didn't you hear, Sylvester? Nothing's free in life. Nothing is free. Not even a free lunch. <laughs> Of the Vikings, number Nothing five, is free. Lineup, Ask me about my divorce. <laughs> also, number 14, Dick Harris checks in for the Diamond Hornets. Oh, got a little bit of blood. Got to come on out. Blood on the shirt. Yeah, Harper. I hope got some blood on him. Tommy Bruner back into the Vikings lineup. Uh, speaking of free, I hope Nick Harris's nice haircut was for free. <laughs> a little off, a little uneven, it's unique. And Nick Harris going with the Gumby, bringing it back early 90s style. It's been a while since I saw one of those. <laughs> 
Oh, I apologize to Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it was just too easy. It's a, it's a good look, though. I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not so sure that I would style my hair that <laughs> way, but hey, you're in high school, teenager. Live your life. Yeah. Three ball. You know, this is coming from a guy who's had a shaved head. <laughs> I've had a shaved head since I was 15 years old. Off the backboard. Nick Harris with the basketball. Nick Harris, there you go. The Gumby help it go, help it went, go in. And they call foul. That's a um, uh, interesting one. Yeah, he was stuck. <laughs> he was stuck in the air with nowhere to go when the official helped him. The official bailed him out on that one. Number 30, Ryan Jones checks in from the Diamond Hornets. One more shot for James Lowe Ward. No good. All right, Trap bringing it up court. Three ball, nutchery, no good. You know, it's only a four point game. And just, you know, judging by the flow of the game, it just, they got a two point game. Judging by the flow of the game, you would think that Lower Richland would be up by about 15. Yeah. Well, you just think if Spring Valley could have made just a few more free throws, <laughs> easily have the lead right here. But Bruner to Bruner on the other end, leading to the dunk. Pretty sure that's happened plenty of time in the backyard. Yeah, you know it. Nice. Bruner says get that out of here. Bruner's asking for it on the block. D'Angelo Ward, he's hot from outside. There was no making the extra pass right there. He's got the confidence right now. His third three of the game and gives Spring Valley fourth three of the game. Third of the second half, I Third of the say. second yeah. half. And gives Spring Valley a one-point lead. Got him with the travel. Back in Savion Townsend, Savion Townsend. The referees talking it over. the ward. Ward's the hot man. Let's see if they find him. In the wall to keep it himself. And Ward, yeah. and ward yes. looks to the side. Yes. <laughs> ward looks and says, hey, I'm hot. <laughs> Give me the ball. I know what you're saying, man. I've just hit three in a row in the past three minutes, man. Find me. And that's that's basketball IQ right there, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, not, as a teammate, you've got to have that awareness. Hey, man, this guy's got the hot hand. Let's keep going back at him. Number four, Noah Harper, back in the Vikings lineup. Replacing number 12, James Will Ward.
all day right Jordan there. Bruner. Jordan Bruner. Tommy Bruner. The Bruner to Bruner connection. Little brother feeding big brother. That's the way it should work, right? <laughs> Washington, no good. They're off and running, Noah Hopper. He'll get a hoop and some harm. Pass the screen on the basket by Noah Harper. That was just a bad attempt at trying to draw a charm. Either you gotta let him go or try to block the shot one. You just, that, to draw a charge at that point in time, that's just a bad attempt. This game has really changed very quickly. I mean, just a moment ago, we were talking about how Spring Valley couldn't get anything going. They were they were the ones down seven, eight points. Lower Richland seemed to have it in control. And well, now you look up, and now they're down eight. Go, Timmy. Count the basket. Stayed out here, it'll be Laura Richland ball. Three ball, no good. Jordan Bruner. Jordan Bruner, assisted by his younger brother, Tommy Bruner. Bruner to Bruner. And just like that, Spring Valley has a 12-point lead. They've got a double-digit lead heading into the last five minutes of this game. You know, it makes you wonder, where did this, how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think what happened, I, th I really think what happened, Spring Valley just continued playing this game, and some of the shots started to fall. Yeah. And most importantly, they stopped turning the ball over. Hey, great point. The threes by Ward, three in the second half, Jordan Bruner, his younger brother finding finding him for some dunks. And not only have they done a good job of handling the basketball, they've done an even better job of rebounding defensively, yes. and that has started their fast break game. Yes. Spring Valley has been off and running in the second half. One three one half court trap once again by Spring Valley. Even though this has given up some points early on, I think it's been pretty effective in changing the momentum of this game. We're gonna stay down here. It'll be Laura Richland ball. And that's one thing I like. Spring Valley isn't resting on the fact that they have this 12-point lead. They're trying to keep their foot on the throat. Uh-oh. Oh. Bruner will lay it in. Tony Bruner. The foul is on Spring Valley's number four, Noah Harper. That's his first team sport. Lay up, oh, we it out of the basket. Kendall Wall over to Tommy Bruner. He'll stop and shoot. No good. Hillsdale give it up to Trap. Nutry 
Back to Tillsdale. Over to Nutry. Nutry. No good. Tillsdale. Give it over to Nutry. Oh. He went down hard on that one. Nutry's a tough kid. He'll jump right back up. Number 23, Jordan Bruder. That's his first. Team's fifth of the half. Two shots for C.J. Nutry. Nutri knocks him down. Bruner, no good. We'll turn it over. Kendall Wall will have it. Kendall Wall can't finish. Travel, he dragged that pivot foot. Oh, lay in, no good, but the follow. Shakur Nelson. 10-point ball game, Spring Valley on top. Noah Harper, Harper lays it in. Harper's had a solid game here today. Several assists and another bucket. Daniel Tisdale Daniel on the follow. Now, if Lower Richland's going to get back in this game, it's going to be second op second chance opportunities just like that. Hey, they have to get them, and they have to eliminate them for Spring Valley. Oh, you see Spring Valley starting to get a little careless with the basketball. Coast to coast for Jacor Nelson. And Coach, Coach Dozier wants to have a timeout so he can. No, Coach Burnett's called a timeout. Yeah, he's going to call a timeout. I think he wants to regroup, give his guys a quick breather. 240 left left in this game, and they've cut the lead to eight. Real interesting. It looked like Spring Valley was just going to coast to an easy victory. And as you said before, they, they kind of let up. Mm -hmm. they, they took their, their foot off of the throat, so to speak, and lower, they've given Lower Richland some life. Once you take your foot off of that of their throat, as they like to say, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Look at this, some full court pressure. This is exactly what Coach Burnett wanted to do coming out of this timeout. See if he can force a quick turnover. Ward. Turnover going back the other way. Got him across the body. It'll be a foul all day. You know, that's the double-edged sword, so to speak, of full court pressing. You can create that turnover, get that deflection, but at the same time, there's always that threat, quick diagonal pass and an easy layup, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what Spring Valley was able to do the previous possession. Unfortunately for Lower Richland, 
Well, they wanted to speed the tempo up, but they ended up turning it over. The diagonal pass will get yourself out of that full court press if it's thrown properly. Inside to Nelson. Nelson will let it roll around. Passing by Nelson. D'Angelo Ward. D'Angelo. <laughs> Everything's D Angelo. falling for Mr. Ward. Tommy Bruner. Bruner, Ward, and Bruner. <laughs> have all been key in the second half. Good. Good three-point jumper there by Nutry. CJ Nutry knocks down the three. Makes it a 10-point ball game. And finally, Spring Valley was able to get enough rhythm, finish enough plays in transition, turn an eight-point deficit into a double-digit lead. And Lower Richland really just didn't have an answer. No, they didn't. And, you know, and, and it's – the simple thing of controlling the ball when you have it, <laughs> mm -hmm. not giving it over to the other team. You know, turnovers. In that first half, the, it was such, such sloppy play by Spring Valley. They had so many sloppy turnovers. That is what kills you. Spring Valley had 16 turnovers in the first half alone. You can't win with 16 turnovers. But to their credit, they came out in the second half, did a much better job. Handling the ball, and look here, they've got a double digit lead. Kendall Wall. Nice lay in. Washington on the score. Coach Dozier going to take the time out, make sure that everybody's on the same page here. I got an eight-point lead under a minute. If I only had two minutes left to live, let those two minutes be in a close ball game, basketball game, because it can last 20 minutes. <laughs> Good expression. I think what Coach Dozier is telling this team right now is, like, look, we're shooting nothing but wide-open layups. Keep the ball moving, secure it, take care of it. If they foul you, go to the line, hit your free throws. Kendall almost turned it over. Jacor was looking up court, trying to figure out where he wanted to get rid of that ball, and didn't notice he was almost out of Referees having a discussion, trying to figure everything out. If they take the advice of that guy in the stands, he said it was backcourt. I'm not sure what his qualifications are, <laughs> but he did say it was backcourt. Don't you know that everybody in the stands is qualified as a referee and a coach? <laughs> <laughs> what I've noticed throughout my years of doing this is your referee, I mean your People in the stands are usually your best coaches. Yes, you're right. Or so they think. That's exactly what they think. And you find out parents are even the best coaches. Parents are even better coaches. 
Tommy Bearden at the line, team one and one. Hats off here to Coach Dozier and his team for turning the momentum around in this second half. Looks like they're gonna walk away with a quality victory at the Chick-fil-A Classic. In the open court, D'Angelo Ward. He'll lay it up for two. Get that out of here. Jordan Bruner still protecting the rim. Nutri will lay it up, no good. <laughs> Coach Burnett's call timeout. <laughs> Everybody in the crowd said, why? <laughs> With three seconds to go on the clock. I might understand it. And that'll be it. The final score, 78-68, Spring Valley on top.